What's up everybody? This is my Acer Chromebook 14 for work. Let's take a look at it. Wow, the top looks absolutely gorgeous. I love it. When I look at the sides, it looks kind of ugly. And same goes for this side as well. You know, it's interesting because this looks absolutely gorgeous. And then you open it and, and it's not. <laughs> because everything in here is dull. This is like a, you have a matte finish screen with this kind of bezel that looks kind of dull. Um, although I do like this layout. This is a nice keyboard layout with a nice large trackpad. You know, another thing that came to mind when I first got this was it, it reminded me a lot of the Acer C720. Even on the back as well. Look at the back hinges. It's got some elements of uh, Acer C720. Plastic bodies. It feels like a reincarnated C720 with thinner bezels, a better keyboard design, and this nice gloss on the outside. This product was released in 2016 with the model number CP5-471 and the name was given Acer Chromebook 14 for work. What's confusing is that they made variations of it, about three different variations of it, with that same model number. It's actually hard to find, but you can find this on their Acer 14 Black. You can find it for 214 through 229 brand new on Amazon. This was first released as a business class Chromebook. It came with this beautiful corning glass uh, you know, cover and what that allows you to do is have a printed logo of maybe your company or whatever else you want. So you can customize this cover and you can also insert here like a, uh, I guess this is a business card holder and another thing that makes it business class, if you dropped or spilled water onto that keyboard, it'll come out of these weep holes right here. So here's one weep hole, here's a second weep hole. It's got this ability, I guess, to, to absorb the shock of a 48 inches of a drop. So you can drop it, no problem. The, the frame is so sturdy that you can have, I say up to about 130 pounds right up on top of it. Why would you do that? I don't know. It weighs in at three pounds and about two ounces if you round up. It measures 13 inches across the top lengthwise. It comes in at a thickness of 0 0.9 and it is 8.9 inches in height. As far as the build of the materials, it's a plastic body all around. The top is Corning Gorilla Glass and it feels nice but as you expect it is also a fingerprint magnet. I do like that it feels very sturdy in the hands. It doesn't have that chassis flex. This one comes at 14 inches even though it doesn't feel like the, another 14 inch Chromebook and the reason why is because they were able to put thinner bezels. When you get thinner bezels you're able to, to put in a 14 inch screen into a 13 inch or so chassis frame. So great job on Acer for pulling this off. The speakers are average for a Chromebook. They are bottom facing, so the sound is gonna be muffled if you have it on your lap. You think you have superpowers? It's a feeling, vision, I have to touch them. For me, this keyboard is comfortable to type on. So this keyboard is not a backlit keyboard, but if you do want one, the more expensive variations of this specific uh, Chromebook will net you a nice backlit keyboard. I really like this trackpad. It's large, solid in place. It doesn't wiggle around like some of the older Chromebooks. Let's have a listen at some clicks. The 
generally Chromebooks don't come with an amazing webcam. But I'll show you some clips and I'll show you some pictures. This is a test. With regards to storage, this comes with 16 gigabytes of the EMMC flash storage. This is a 14 inch TFT LCD and it's sort of like a TN panel pretty much. So you get poor viewing angles on it and you're not gonna get very rich colors. Resolution is 1366 by 768, making it a 720p high definition screen. Aspect ratio is 16 by 9. The screen does not have touchscreen abilities on it. This is not a great multimedia, you know, photo editing device. The processor on this Chromebook is a Celeron 3855U. It's a dual core at 1.6 gigahertz. It comes with four gigabytes of RAM and it uses the Intel HD 510 shared graphics. So it runs an Octane score of uh, 15,000. All right, that's actually pretty good. Chromebooks that get under 10,000 are relatively slow, in my opinion. Anything at 15, that's pretty sweet. That's like a, a middle range. You got some power. It's not blazing fast, but it is going to be fast. For those that use the speedometer benchmark, here is the score that this Chromebook gets. So before we get right into it with the uh, real-time testing, let's uh, take a look at uh, our internet speed. So that gives you an idea of what my internet speeds are as we're surfing through the internet. All right, let's open up a third tab here and let's go into Facebook. Okay, we're gonna open up Facebook. Okay, opens up pretty quick. I'm gonna scroll down and see how fast it refreshes the new post down here. So it does really good at handling this. Let's open up another tab here. Let's go into homedepot.com. Okay, real fast here, no issues. Check out the, some departments. Okay, let's go to uh, doors and windows. Loads really fast. Okay, let's open up another tab. Let's go to Amazon. And uh, let's check out this Fire HD 8. Let's see how fast it loads these images right here. It usually takes a while, even on a very fast computer. Wow, okay, very impressive, look. So sometimes if you'll notice that these images take long to load. And this was fast. Okay, let's go to another product. Everything is loading really fast. I mean, you can like, this is like, this is awesome. <laughs> now let's open up another tab. Let's go right into uh, YouTube. Let's see what's trending right now. Hey, I was watching this earlier. Coming any minute now for you guys. But what I am questioning is your belief that you are something more than human. Now let's have a look at the stats for nerds. And let's see if it uh, drops any frames at, we're going to run it at 1080p. Okay. So out of uh, 1,627 frames, we have zero drop. Does a really good job with 1080p video. I don't think that's gonna be the case with uh, 
with 4K. Keep in mind that the, even though it's a 720p screen, it upscales it to 1080. Let's try some 4K video and see how it does. So here, you can see the stats up here at 30 frames per second. Look at the frames here. So this is uh, some uh, 4K video. Obviously this, oh, we got some buffering, that's fine. Ooh, we got some drop frames already. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm dropping some frames. You're not really gonna be able to enjoy some 4K video streaming from the internet, unfortunately. So maybe there's some hope at a 1440. So let's do that, 1440, full screen, play baby. All right. Very nice, very nice. This is good, it actually looks sharp. It's beautiful, I like it. Oh man, this is a relaxing video. Okay, that's enough. Now let's see how it shuts down and starts up. Here we go. Shut down, okay, let's power off, click. Okay, now we're, let's turn it back on. Okay, that boot up time could be a little bit faster. I don't know if it's just me, but it felt as if this one took longer to boot up. So I have a C720 here. So let's boot them up or let's uh, open them up at the same time and see which one starts faster. Here we go. Ah. So it gets up to 12 hours of battery life. Now, keyword, up to. Those 12 hours, even though it's up to, you can definitely feel that it gets more. You're gonna get more time out of this than any product that's rated up to 10 hours or up to eight hours or up to nine hours. I can't really say that I've gotten 12 hours, but I will tell you that this one is one of the longest lasting Chromebooks that I have used. So let's have a look inside this Chromebook so we can see repairability and upgradability. So after you remove the 12 screws, you have to carefully pry off that case. So things that you can replace on here from the start, speakers, there's one speaker, this is the other one. The battery, it looks like if you wanted to upgrade the thermal paste onto that CPU, you definitely have access to that. You can replace the fan. So here's the wireless card. You can replace that. You won't be able to upgrade the RAM. You will also will not be able to upgrade storage. So what are my final thoughts on this Chromebook? You know, for the price at $220, and like $20, it's a very good Chromebook. You're going to get a processor that's at an octane score of like 15K. Considering that the processor is like the engine of your car. So the processor is one of the most expensive and most important things on the Chromebook. No way you're gonna find a like a you know a $220 Chromebook brand new with a 15k octane score. Not gonna happen. So I think that you're getting a lot of bang for your buck overall with this Chromebook. 